Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the shop once again. Today we're going to show you how to change the spark plugs in your 1.5 liter Ford EcoBoost engine. Now this engine was first introduced in the 2014 Ford Fusion and then they adopted it onto the Escape in 2017 and then they'll probably add it to other models throughout the years here. But I think right now only the Ford Fusion and the Escape has this engine as an available option. Now 1.5 liter is much easier to work on than the old 1.6 liter. So this is gonna be a very simple process, but I figure I'd walk you through it so you can do it once and do it right. And I'll of course give you all the torque specs, gap, and the motorcraft part number to use. Now these plugs are iridium, so they'll last to 100,000 miles, no sweat, even on a boosted engine. So once these plugs are due, this will probably be the last set of plugs you're going to put into this engine. By that time, it'll be 200,000, and I don't expect these cars to last much past 200,000 miles. Let's get to it. All right, here we go. Now, these are the tools and the supplies that you're going to need to get this job done. So, of course, we're going to need a 3 8 ratchet, some extensions, preferably longer ones, and then we're going to need a 9 16 not a 5 8 We're going to need a 9 16 spark plug socket, okay, to get down in there and get these out of there. Now the plugs you want to use are the Motorcraft ones. You want to put a light coat of the nickel anti-seize on the lower threads here. Just don't get it on the ground strap or the porcelain. And that'll keep them from galling in the heads in there. No matter what kind of coating is on these, the, the nickel on there, there's still going to be a problem with them binding in the cylinder heads. You'll hear that in here in a second, I'm sure. Now these plugs, they come pre-gapped. So they're going to come out of the box just like this with a sleeve on them to make sure that they cannot get damaged in transit since they're gapped at the factory. Still, I like to use a feeler gauge and just kind of get in there a little bit and just check them, but generally they're okay. Now the gap on these is 28 thousandths. And then we're also gonna want some dielectric grease for our boots going back together, okay? And we're of course gonna want some compressed air, some kind of compressed air. It's not totally necessary on these engines because they are pretty clean. Uh, but it's a good idea to have some compressed air on hand to clean everything before you start pulling plugs out and opening up the engine. Now all the special tools and the part numbers and all that stuff for all this is going to be down in the video description. So you guys can just reference that and pick everything up you need for this job. All right, now let's get to it. This right here is probably the best angle I can put you at so you can see exactly what's going on here. Now the Ford Fusion you can see here is it's pretty easy to access everything on top of the engine whereas the Escape has that cowl that comes way out so you might have to fight that a little bit. Might be an air intake tube going over the side uh, but in general it's very easy to work on same as this one. So the very first thing we're going to do is pull this sound insulator off of here. Just kind of go at different points on here so you don't tear it. This one is you know a foam style. Get that out of the way. And then right here is our quail packs, and these ones do have two bolts to them. Before you start taking the quail packs out, you want to make sure you clean around the boots where they go into the cylinder so you make sure it's nice and clean. So let's use some compressed air like this. There we go, that's an even better top-down view for you guys. Now once everything is cleaned out with the compressed air, we can start moving some of these harnesses out of the way. So you'll see little push fasteners like these, so we can kind of loosen it a little bit. There's one right here. Just kind of get them loose. I use either a trim tool or I use my cat claw. This thing's awesome for wire harnesses. We can kind of get them out of the way. Then we're gonna start disconnecting these uh, primary connections primary wires from the um, quills themselves. So you simply pull up on the locking tab a little bit like that, and then you can grab it and pull. Grab it and pull, okay? Just go along, try not to break that locking tab. These come off pretty easy actually. Not too bad, I think this vehicle has 100,000 on it, so this is all coming apart pretty easy. Now you don't want to take off too much of the harness, extra places you don't really need to because there is potential for the um, retainers to crack. So just enough to get it out of the way. Now I'll tuck these connectors out of the way. Okay. And then we can get in here. We can go to all these coils and take off both eight mil bolts for each one of them.
You can see all this stuff is pretty easy. It's being right on top like this. Now this one again, we're just gonna move it out of the way enough to sneak the quail and stuff past there. Put both off to the side so we don't drop them down the cylinder. And then we can go ahead and just give a little wiggle and pull these out. Now you see that? Looks like it's all bent and stuff. Well, that's just the way these engines are. 1.6 liters the same way, okay? And that's why there's two bolts. They go in just right and they lock into the spark plug. So we can take these and put them off to the side, pull them all out, and we'll just keep pulling these out. Off to the side. This one's gonna be a little tricky. Once it pops though, we'll be good to go. We can maneuver it past. There, there, there. Kind of angle it past. There we go. Now again, since it is an open valley down in here for everything to collect, you want to hit it again really well with some compressed air. At this point, with everything cleaned down in the spark plug well area, we can start pulling spark plugs out. Now what you want to do is take one spark plug out at a time. Take it out, change it out, torque it down, seal up that hole, and then move on to the next one, the next one, and the next one. You don't want to just start pulling all these out. There's potential for any kind of debris, a rock that you didn't see, a bolt, anything to fall down into the cylinder. So open one cylinder at a time. And the way it looks is just like this. We're gonna take our spark plug socket, universal, this one's built into it, and we're gonna go right down to that spark plug. And these ones are a little bit hard to see. So you got to kind of get down in here and really look and make sure you lock on. Okay, we're locked on to it. And then we're just gonna use our standard 3 8 ratchet and we're gonna break torque on it. And these shouldn't be too bad. But you hear that? Yeah, they're gonna be dry after 100,000 miles. So that is why I tell you to put a little bit of anti-seize on the new plugs, no matter what kind of fancy metal coating is on there, okay? Now let's make sure there's no problems in the future with galling or the plugs coming out. See, it's hard for me to turn them by hand because they're so dry in there. Ugh. These plugs have a lot of threads on them uh, because it's a boosted engine like this. And they're so deep down in there. All right, sounds like we're good to go. Look at that sucker. Yep, these are toast, these are ready to go. These have about 100,000 miles on them. Now once the spark plug's out of the cylinder, I like to use compressed air wand once again. I'll stick it down into the cylinder and then hit it and that'll create a, a positive uh, uh, force of air inside of there, positive pressure inside the cylinder to blow anything that's in there out. And you'll see why here in a second. So we'll get it down in there, into the cylinder itself, and then we'll hit it. That way it cleans the threads and will also um, make sure there's nothing down in the cylinder. And then we're going to take our new spark plug, put it into our socket. It's magnetic, so it'll hold it. And then we're again going to look down in here and try to line up the best we can. These do go at an angle, uh, but you don't want to start banging on that ground strap because that's going to mess with our gap. So you can see it kind of, kind of just fell into place like that. What you want to do now is turn it in by hand. With the anti-seize on there and those threads cleaned, we should be able to turn this in all the way till it seats by hand. This way you know it's going in correctly. We're not putting excessive force in the porcelain and we're also not cross threading. There we go, all the way down. Now, the torque spec on these plugs is nine foot pounds, but you don't need a torque wrench, believe me. I don't use them on these, I have a feel for them. What you do is you take a standard size three eighths and you grab it, you choke up on it, I guess you could say, closer to the actual pivot point on here. That way you reduce the amount of leverage you have on the ratchet. So it looks a little something like this. Keep it nice and straight. You don't want to start cocking it and turning it because you'll crack the porcelain. So we're gonna keep it nice and straight, which these are on an angle, so it's like that. And then we're gonna take it, 
We're gonna get snug, and then we're just gonna turn a little bit more. You choke up on it like that, and you re really limit yourself so you don't over torque them and crack them. And that's all there is to it. You repeat that procedure for each one of the cylinders all the way down. Now, when you're going back together, you wanna to take your coil, make sure it's not cracked or anything like that. Uh, no carbon tracking marks on here, which would look like white lines, thin lines inside of here uh, from the spark plug misfiring. If there is any kind of damage like that to the boot in here, you wanna change it, okay? The boots, I think, on these are available separately. If they are, I'll link to it down below also for you guys in case you find any damage in the boot. Otherwise, you can just kind of dust them off, make sure everything looks good to go, nothing's damaged, and then we'll put some dielectric grease on there. The very end here, just like that, and then we go up and it goes onto there, it'll spread it out for us. So just make sure that you hit the spark plug. And you'll kind of feel it slide into there, and then the coil itself will be lined up with these holes, pretty much. You'll know you're good to go. Once everything's done, back in, bolted in, uh, we can start just putting these connectors back onto the coil. So just push them in until they click, like so, and then you can push back on the secondary locking tab on there. Just go through on each one of them, make sure it clicks and locks in. There we go. This one I think goes here. There we go. And this one's a little tight there. And then we'll start pushing in all these little retainers all the way around. There we go. At this point, with everything back together and double checked, we're good to go. We can go ahead and start it up. Leave the appearance cover off there for now. We're gonna let it run for a little bit, make sure everything looks okay. And then of course, you wanna look at the engine. If it's misfiring because we did anything wrong, one cylinder missing out of four, it's gonna shake pretty violently. So you'll know right away. Start this one for reference. There it is. As you can see, all four cylinders are hitting just fine. No misfires, no installation errors, and the engine's nice and smooth like that. That's all for now. I hope this helped you fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you next time, guys.